Guys, I'm Zeke, as you all know. You read the title. I just kind of wanted to get some stuff off of my chest. You guys have sort of dealt with the, the aftermath of it, of what I'm talking about. You guys have sort of dealt with the aftermath of my mental health just in how I've been active on YouTube, of course. My, my periods of going away, my periods of coming back. I talked a lot about my mental health in the being selfish video, but I just wanted to kind of open up. I feel more comfortable in front of a camera. I've just adapted to it at this point. I am going to make some disclaimers before I start this video. One, for anyone that may be thinking on the contrary of this, I I definitely do respect privacy <laughs> and and holding back information that may not be completely necessary out for the public to know. Um, but I feel like it's best for me personally to be an open book because that's a big part of my issues lately. And plus, like I said, I just feel more comfortable in front of the camcorder. So I, I feel like I can truly express how I'm feeling through this avenue more than going to talk to somebody I know. Number two, I've got these written down, I'm so sorry, but number two, if anybody that's watching this is perhaps looking for advice or perhaps looking at this video to to try and figure out their own situations if they're relating to what I'm going through. Um, it would be really nice if there was, but uh, just because I'm doing it this way doesn't mean that you have to. You know, this isn't, I'm not implying, and I don't want to imply that this is the most effective method to deal with uh, any mental health issues. It's, it's just for, like I said, for me, this is the best way for me to do it. Um, but for you, if you need to, go go see a therapist, talk to family, talk to friends, partner, spouse, um, even just go shout in the woods, you know? That's, that's helped me a lot in the past, weirdly enough. Number three, I am going to be an open book about myself, not necessarily other people. So, unless you know the person uh, from my channel, I will not be mentioning anybody's names in this for respect and privacy reasons. Hopefully you guys will understand that. And the last one, anybody that's watching this video that knows me, despite what has come up recently, um, not an event for, for anybody else watching. It's not, it's not an event, it's just, the, un, the, the unraveling of my current state. To anyone who's watching, I'm now okay. Because I truly feel like I'm now on the right path. And I'll get into that later on. I apologize if this video is going to be long and long-winded. Uh, but I just need to spill my guts. You know, this shouldn't be scripted. I don't want it to feel fake. I want this to be me. In fact, I've even been trying lately as hard as I can to make the person that I am in front of the camera me. Like, I want to show myself as much as possible when I make videos, but if I haven't done that, I'm hoping that this video can do it. Another disclaimer, too, as well. I forgot to say, say this one. I am going to be editing this, cutting chunks out. There won't be any huge editing moments like I sometimes have in my videos. I don't have a lot in my videos, but there, there's not going to be any in this. I promise you that. I'm just going to be cutting out spots that are either dead air or I have my stutter. Um, I don't have a stutter. It's just I stutter sometimes. But editing is just to make the video as concise as possible because from what I'm predicting, this one is going to be long. So anything that can help tighten it together for anybody watching, that's good. But okay, let's Let's talk about my mental health. Um, lately, it's been horrible. <laughs> it's good now. At least I feel good. Don't know if that's gonna last. I hope, I really hope because 
where I'm at right now feels right. But to explain before uh, my mental health being horrible, um, like I said, this this started from a really funny place. Just for some backstory, as a kid, I wanted to be an animator. Uh, I didn't think about doing comic books at the time. I wanted to make I wanted to make cartoons, and I wanted to do one of my life. And I was just gonna call it my life. I, very original, I know. And I even had a journal that I like kept logs of what I would do as episodes. Um, don't have that anymore, of course. And obviously, that never came to fruition. Um, but I was looking back, and I was like, man, I would love to do a show like that. But my childhood was kind of boring. I, I certainly felt that way. Um, and so I was talking to Haley about it because I, I she's very, she's very good with stories. She reads a bunch, so. So I, I like to go to her sometimes for story advice, which is very helpful. Um, and she was like, well then just do the exciting parts. And thinking of some stuff, the stuff that felt most exciting to me was the stuff that was the stories that I came up with. And I realized, or I, I rediscovered one day that I I did one of those kind of like twists on myself that you sometimes see people do where it's like the big sci-fi epic action adventure character of themselves. Let's just say that this guy's name was Kartonzik. <laughs> um, that name is just wow. <laughs> um, but I was thinking, and I was like, Hey, Kartonzik had a bunch of adventures that he did. What if I kind of write the story of Kartonzik instead of me? I was thinking more about it, and I came up with an even better idea. It was going to be me, or at least a character based off of me, that he was going through stuff in his life and lived it through the filter of that that uh, adventure character. And so I went ahead and I was going to make this story. And I even went as far as like I even came up with the finale. And the finale was the main character being an adult. And he breaks down. Because going through his life following Kartonzik he feels unfulfilled. He feels like a loser. Like he hasn't done anything interesting with his life. Like nothing good or cool or epic has happened and that's all that he's wanted. That's why he made the character. And people talk him down and they say, dude, let's just call him Kartonzik for now because that was who I based off of, but it's like, dude, Kartonzik is you. Everything that Kartonzik has done, you've done. You're just painting it in a different picture. Your life isn't boring. You just weren't living it while it happened. And so the story ends with him taking his giant portfolio of Kartonzik and he throws it away because he doesn't need him. And at the time when I created this story, it really just kind of felt like that's just a fun idea with a great moral behind it. I didn't think much of it past that. But then things got pretty dark for me at one point. Uh, so lately I moved in with my, with one of my best friends, uh, Clay, you guys have seen him. And ever since I moved in with him, things up here have been bad because I'm new to being an adult. And it's really hard to like pinpoint all of this stuff. Because it's 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 it it's hard to like start with this because what I'm talking about 
is relevant in so many different times in my life that I don't know which one to start on. Now that I'm new to being an adult, actually being an adult, stressing about money all the time, I kind of broke down. I was just at work one day, and my boss, uh, I think you guys know, I, I'm, I'm working for my father. My dad told me, because I work construction, I work, uh, I, like, I'm, I'm a contractor. There was, there was some stained pieces of wood. Pretty big pile of them. I just needed to move them from the living room into the garage in the house that we were building. And he took off. While he was gone, I couldn't remember which ones that I had to take over because there was a pile of the stained ones and the non-stained ones. a panic attack. A bad panic attack. I started to question my competence as a human being because I couldn't even remember a simple task like that. And I started to tell myself that I've got horrible m memory, I buckle under pressure, I'm terrible with directions, Maybe I'm just not built for this world. And that stuck with me for a, for a while. Not long, because this was fairly recent. But that line of thinking just... It wouldn't leave my head. I couldn't stop telling myself, You're pathetic. You're a loser. Because I really, really felt like one. And I've, I've dealt with bad self-esteem issues for a long time. I really overvalued others' perceptions on me. Not so much until middle school. Again, I know that I'm, I know that this stuff is like fairly innocuous, like just, just middle school, but when you're not even 20, that's about a good eighth of my life so far. So yeah, it's it's still pretty big for me. I started to I started to dress a certain way, you know. I would always wear these skinny jeans. I loved colored skinny jeans. I had a red pair, a blue pair, a yellow pair. People always called me mustard because I had some mustard yellow skinny jeans that I always wore to school, and uh, and I had like the the Bieber hair, you know. The, 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 fr the fringe bangs with the flip and people actually thought I was gay which I hate to be this guy but looking back it's understandable and I don't want to say that I got bullied for the way that I dressed and the way I did my hair but it definitely affected me poorly because I had such bad self-esteem issues. The point that I'm trying to get at is these things like that have they have roots. So I'm not surprised that I still feel this way today. And then and then I had a period in later middle school into early high school where I was a people pleaser. I tried to get on everybody's good side. And because of it, I felt very low at that time. I just didn't realize that I felt low. I also had some friends that weren't good for me because I was part of a friend group that very much had a power dynamic and I was lower. Um, in fact, that right there, that goes back to the whole thing of calling myself pathetic and a loser because growing up, I always felt like I was just kind of the ass end of everybody's jokes in my friend group. And by the way, I don't want this to... I don't want to victimize myself. That's not the point of this. I'm just stating how I felt, what I went through, how I'm interpreting it. I'm not, there's no feel bad for me behind any of this. This is just me opening up on how I feel. I, f I felt like the ass end of the joke. You know, you've always got, you've always got the, the clown 
in the group. I felt like the clown. In fact, going back to Kartonzik, um, I even told myself when I was going through that panic attack, maybe I'm not the hero of my own story. Maybe I'm just the side character in everybody else's. Which is very contradictory with advice that I have given to many people that I care about. I've told many people that have struggled with that, that they are their own person. And they need to live like they are. I didn't feel like I was. I don't think I really have. I just didn't notice it until recently. Basically, I, I just always wanted more of myself. I always wanted to be the hero. Somebody's hero. And when you try to be the hero, and you're pretty incompetent at some things, I'll definitely admit, I'm definitely not great at a lot of things. Um, but everybody's like that, so it's okay. There's nobody that's good at everything. But when you're trying to be the hero, and you fuck up, it sucks. It really does. There were times where I didn't feel like I was a good enough friend to my current friends. Like I was just kind of there. Back to how I felt when I was a kid. And there were many times that I truly felt like Haley could do better than me. Because I didn't think that I could step up to the position that I needed to step up to. And it's never fun to to think that you're not good enough to be with the woman that you want to spend the rest of your life with. I, I need to go back to my disclaimer. I am okay. I'm better now. Because I've started to fix the problem started to. It's just reopening this wound finally and finally getting everything out. It's difficult. It hurts. I've just felt for the longest time like a loser. Like I'm not good enough. Like I'm pathetic. Because as a kid, I never really did anything as a kid. School, I was pretty good in school, but didn't mean much to me anyway. And with what I was hearing growing up, I always felt like what I had the most interest in was going to get me nowhere. Because that's all that I heard. YouTube videos and art story writing you're not going to be able to do that with your life that's what I heard and also going back to the stuff about being called gay and stuff like that for how I dressed I growing up I was a very sensitive kid I wasn't much of a boy I didn't like to play outside I was physically very sensitive. I was emotionally very sensitive. I couldn't handle much. And I'm not saying that that's good or bad right now. I'm just, I'm just saying what it is. I was a very effeminate kid. And with the stuff of everybody thinking that you're gay growing up, which that in itself, it's not cares, you know, it's, it doesn't matter, but it, th this all builds up, and I grow up feeling very much emasculated, and even, and even now when I've dropped that, that mindset of there's a certain thing that a man is other than just literally fucking XY chromosomes. There's still that small part of me that, that has felt lesser than. 
It's just a lot of that stuff that some would consider metrosexual that I was a part of, you know? I'm into fashion. I'm into grooming. I'm into less masculine things. And I got told all that as a kid. That that, that what I was doing was girly. And I definitely did get, as a kid, the man up, get a grip, stop being a pussy. That was one of the hard ones. Another big one, I've never been the brightest guy. That's one of the big ones that I don't even really think about. Is like, f fear of stupidity. I'm not good at speaking. I'm not good at paying attention, not good at taking directions. I'm pretty sure I've got ADD going through the fucking roof. I've just never wanted to come off as incompetent, as dumb. I've always wanted to, to be smart because you can't be reliable if you're not smart. At least that's what I told myself. So lately I can tell that I've been trying to correct some of this stuff some of these perceptions of me. Like, honestly, I can't, I can't remember the last time I truly cried. And if this indicates anything, it wasn't at my grandpa's funeral. It's been a long time since I've been vulnerable like that. Because I, I just felt like it's, it's wrong. You know, I shouldn't show people that I don't feel like people would want to see that. I cry about certain things and I've been I've been called a wuss for it. And I'm not accusing anybody. Just I'm just saying that I have. I know that I have. At least that's how I've interpreted it. I feel like there's two loud voices screaming. One is saying you're incompetent, you're pathetic, you're a loser. The other one is saying, get over yourself, you are fine as you are, stop listening to this guy. And because those two are going head to head, I've just kind of been partaking in neither of them. And I've really felt to just be at a crossroads lately in my life. I've had a lot of moments lately that I've felt depressed. Three major ones. You guys know about the first one. That was when I overworked myself with my former business, uh, freelance. I, I worked too much and I broke. I buckled under the pressure and I had to just kind of drop it all for a few months. Obviously YouTube for quite a while. At the time I wasn't drawing. That's always the indicator for me. That if I'm not making art then something's wrong. Then the next one was the summer after that one. So that one happened in the fall of 2019. I fixed that one, I felt like. That one I felt like was dealt with. Like I had less on my plate and I was comfortable, you know? Like my job was getting to me not not like the people at my job, what my job was was getting to me. You guys know it was I was a cashier and it was it was destroying me, man. Not because of like too much. It was not enough. That was the problem. It was destroying me. And the business and all that. Um so I quit that job. I quit doing my freelance and I went to go work for my father. Or my dad, it's so weird for me to call him father. Um, but I went to work for my dad. And then around the summer of that one, I had another one. And this one was the hardest. I don't want to talk about this one, but I, I should. I need to say it. Um, so to, to start this one, we were working on framing a house. And of course I was the new guy. I only had a few months of experience under my belt, so I was just kind of there. Wasn't doing much. Wasn't doing much right. And by the way, uh, this job made my temper come back. 
I'm not blaming that on anybody. It just did. Like, I didn't have temper issues and anger issues until I started to work construction, and I don't know why. I always, I always theorized that it was maybe just because, like, whenever I put myself under physical stress, that's when it happens. Mental stress, not really. We were at this job. I was just doing a lot of kind of the grunt work. And one specific one. We were setting the the roof trusses. The roof trusses, if you guys don't know, that's essentially just the framing that sits up on top of the walls for the actual roof to go over. So like the, the, the triangle pieces basically of framing. We were putting those on. Of course they were big. We had to hire a crane and they needed somebody to guide the truss while the crane was lifting it. They gave it to me. And I'll never forget this, but the guy that was operating the crane, and he was so nice. He was such a nice man. He was so understanding of the fact that I was struggling. And he told me, you literally can't mess this up, so don't be scared. And I messed it up. My dad and the man that we were working with were almost hurt because of what I was doing. And I went into the porta potty at the job site and broke down. And my dad and the worker tried to tell me, hey, we didn't want to be too hard on you back there. It's just certain things got to be done a certain way. I was like, yeah, I understand. As I was holding back the lump in my throat. And around that time, I started to actually kind of become suicidal. My mind kind of did the same thing that it was doing recently. And if you can't sweep water out of a basement floor, guide a piece of wood with a rope, if you just can't do basic grunt work, you're not going to make it in this world. And that scared me so much to the point where I thought maybe it's just not worth it. There was a slight second there that I considered offing myself. But the thought of death scared me so much more than fucking up in life. So, here we are. And then this next one, where it was kind of the same thing. Like, I, like right now, as an adult, I have the least amount of responsibilities that I'm ever going to have. And I'm buckling under the pressure. I'm, I'm collapsing, I'm breaking. At least it felt like it. Some days it feels like I can barely function. Because I can't focus, I can't remember anything, I can't think. This wasn't who I wanted to be, you know? I never wanted to be that guy. I never wanted to be the jokester. Even though that's just the only person I've been, I've never wanted to be the jokester. I've wanted to be, wanted to be the hero. I wanted to be the leader of my own story. I wanted to, I wanted to be able to seize the moment and handle any situation that has that will be thrown my way. And it felt like that wasn't happening. It felt like maybe there's no point in trying. I don't believe in fate, but it really felt for a while like fate was kicking me in the ass. But now we're starting to get into me fixing these, these issues. Um, I've listened to a lot of different people on life advice. Um, a couple of specific ones are Gary Vaynerchuk and Jordan Peterson. Those two seem like the ones that are trying the most to help out people in terms of not anything too specific, but just how to function in life. So even though Gary V focuses a lot on business, um, 
He also just gives a lot of great life advice. And I've been hearing from these guys over and over again. Humility. Not overjudging yourself. Not caring about other people's opinions. Don't compare yourself to other people. I feel like the only two that I've really been good at is not caring about people's opinions and, well, not, not, not having pride. Because the way that I put it is like, I, I never feel proud, you know? So like me not opening up to people, and that's, that's another big part of this. When I was saying before that I was being unhealthy about how to approach this, I was holding back. I didn't want to seem like a loser to the people that I admire and care about. My family, my friends, Haley. I didn't want to seem pathetic. I didn't want to lose their respect. I did, but that, it's not even just like, it's not losing their respect. It's that I don't, I care about those people a lot. And the last thing that I want is to be a liability on them. So I've been hiding parts of myself. I haven't wanted to open up because I don't want them, maybe it is pride. I don't want them to look at me any different. I, I finally, the other day, opened up to Adam and Haley. I, I opened up to both of them about this, what I've talked about. And I told Haley that I I was really scared to. And that I completely understood if she lost any respect for me. If she didn't look at me the same. I said the same to Adam. The two people in this world that I probably care about the most. I didn't want to tell them because I didn't I didn't want them to look at me the way that I've looked at myself. That was really hard to say. And that's the thing, like, like I feel like I want to cry right now, but I can't. There's something in my head that's, like, holding it back. I don't know, but I just, I can't. I hope I can one day. sounds dramatic. <laughs> I've been hearing all this advice and it makes such sense but I just I just couldn't apply it and I didn't know why. Every time that I tried to I just ended up back at square one with myself just feeling like a loser. I was wondering like why do I feel like a loser? Because here's the thing I haven't done anything different with myself. I've pretty much just been the same guy since day one. At least it's felt that way. I've changed in some ways, some major ways, but I've just felt like me. So like, what is it that's not changing? Because something needs to be changed. And I realized that with Kartonzik, with all the stories that I was creating, with listening to other people's opinions, or not even their opinions, my interpretation of their of their opinions. I was holding myself to a standard that wasn't me. I was trying to be somebody that wasn't me. I wanted to be Kartonsic. But I'm not. I'm Carter. feels good and I was I was realizing I was like why all this life advice that I'm hearing makes such sense but it's like I never feel fulfilled like I never feel like I've done any good with myself like why is that it's because I'm looking a mile ahead instead of right here holding myself to such a high standard and 
unhealthy standard. And I've wanted to be somebody that, that I'm not. You know, I told myself that, like, I'm not going to be the hero of my story. I'm not going to be the leader. I am. Maybe not in the way that I thought I would be. But everybody's their own hero. Everybody leads their own story. You know, like I've told people before. I mentioned this a little bit at the beginning of the video. I've told people before. You're not your mother's son or your mother's daughter. You are not your friend's friend. You are not your teacher's student. You are not your boss's employee. You are you. And that is enough. Now this isn't to say that you shouldn't fix problems that can be solved. You should. Nobody's ever going to be perfect, but I genuinely believe that you can strive for it completely and do so in a positive and healthy manner. Just because you, you'll never be perfect doesn't mean that you shouldn't fix any problem that's in front of you. And that takes a lot of self-discipline, and that is what I need for myself. But I'm happy to say that that is my next step. Because as I said at the beginning, how I'm okay, how I've started, what I've needed to do, I've accepted myself. I'm okay with being Carter. <laughs> you know, I don't think I've ever said that once to myself. <laughs> Not necessarily that I thought I needed to, but but I didn't know that I wasn't. But I finally am. I'm content with myself. I feel on top of the world right now. I did step one, and I need to just continue on. I need to take time for myself to figure out how to move forward. Because the goal is that I won't run into these insecurities anymore. You know, it's super easy to say that, like, your insecurities don't mean shit, other people's opinions don't mean shit, but applying it is a lot harder if you're a person that has dealt with the short end of the stick on some of that stuff. I feel like I'm ready to apply it, you know? I think I just need to, like, make a list at some point of just everything that I need to do to become me. And that's what's important, and I need to let everybody know that finding yourself and ignoring everybody else for a little bit, that is vital for who you are as a person. You cannot handle a relationship, a friendship, a good career, any responsibility if you don't have yourself handled. So take time away from everything. Take time away from the people that you spend your, spend your days with to figure out who you are. And if you've actually found it, and you feel comfortable in your own skin, bless you. And if you haven't, that's okay. As long as you strive for it, you need to put in the work. You know, like I'm giving very vague advice. Some might even call it bad advice, and that's okay. Because the goal is that I will just give you the first step and you take your own path. The rest of it is on you. 
I've not ad-libbed this much for a video before, but it feels great. It feels really, really good. If you've made it to this point, thanks for sticking with me. Whether the person that is watching is a family member or a friend or just a fan or a first time viewer, thanks for sticking with me and putting up with my bullshit. <laughs> Don't think I have much else to say. I'm Zeke, and I will see all of you later.